Welcome back. I'm Megan. I'm a senior library associate with the Pikes Peak Library District. And today you'll be joining us for our craft bullet journal. To start off, I'm going to just explain what a bullet journal is. And basically, a bullet journal is a method of personal organization developed by designer writer Carol. The system organizes scheduling, reminders, to do lists brainstorming and other organizational tasks into a single notebook or journal. It is a way to have everything available in one place. So before we begin, we're going to refer to our instructions that we have that you would have picked up by now. And make sure you have the following in your kit. One blank journal. It'll be a white journal similar to mine. One pen. I have the pens here that you'll be receiving. They are uh, black fine point smooth pens and one six inch ruler. This is optional for your use, but for those of us who like to have really neat and even lines, this really helps us. Um, or if you're like me and you're okay with things being a little wonky, that's cool too. There's no wrong way. Uh, some items that you might have on hand that you might want to consider using is a pencil. This way you're not putting anything in pen until you know for sure that this is what you want it to look like. Uh, your current calendar or appointment keeping system, so I had my phone on hand, uh, I had my Google Calendar open, I had a bunch of stuff open uh, just for practicing this. And although it's not recommended as we are doing a minimalist style today, you may consider having some decorative materials like stickers or washi tape. This can add to the customization of your personal journal. Um, but in general, it's not recommended as it can distract from the purpose of your bullet journal, which is to keep you and all of your information organized. So I'll be back in just a moment with the beginning of our instructions. Before we begin, there are some things that I want you to remember as you follow along with our process. And these are also listed in your instructions. So if I go too fast, please refer to the instructions or pause the video and rewind or whatever you need to do, okay? So uh, I already mentioned that we're using a minimalistic style. And the reason for that is it's a good framework for building uh, the basic before you get into complicated systems of organization. And in general, it's just really easy to adapt and um, use as you go along. In general, you're gonna hear me say, keep it simple. For real, That's you just wanna keep it simple. Um, this is a way of figuring out what does and doesn't work for you. And so as you move along, you know, you'll see things that maybe certain elements of the bullet journal aren't working for you. And the great news with the bullet journal is you don't have to keep them. You can just stop using it. It's pretty great. Uh, and this will probably sound counterintuitive considering what a bullet journal is for, but don't put everything in your bullet journal. Uh, personal experience, I used to try to keep my grocery list, uh, my book list, my movie list, um, my personal schedule, my work schedule, my chores, uh, my personal habit goals, and all of that in my bullet journal. And it was overwhelming to the point where I just stopped using my bullet journal. So you don't want to put everything in there. You just want to put the things that you really want to keep on task with, things that are the most important. Okay? Be patient. Find your rhythm. Uh, no two bullet journals are necessarily exactly the same, and you're going to have to do what works for you. This is your bullet journal. You're making it work for you. The tools that we provided are a starter, but if you find pen isn't working for you because you prefer to erase, use pencil. It's you're allowed to use. You can allow to use whatever it is you want to use, and you're allowed to change what you want to change. There are no hard and fast rules with bullet journals, and what I'm going to be presenting today are just some good starters to get you um, thinking about how you want to organize your journal and some good just core principles, foundational principles for what a journal like this would look like. And I know I said this already, but seriously, keep it simple. It's that will help you stay on task the most and will keep you from feeling overwhelmed. So Go ahead and pull out that journal and let's get started. All right, let's get started. So we're gonna grab our journal. We're gonna turn to the first page. 
Uh, it's very sweet to see, and I'm going to turn to another page here in a minute, but as I was practicing these instructions, I often duplicated stuff just to see if what I was writing made sense. But you're going to put your index near the front. So ours is actually on page two, where you can see it nice and clearly. And you want to use an index uh, to just keep track of the information in your journal. You're going to use page numbers and brief descriptors to mark what, pa what the pages are. So we have our September calendar here at the beginning and our page numbers, and we have that going down. And you'll see a couple of these are squared, and that's for something I'll talk about in a little bit. But um, this is pretty open to interpretation, and you're not going to fill it out all in one go. Otherwise, you're going to be a little overwhelmed. Just add as you go. So that is your index. And now a real quick brief note on what these ones mean. Later, I will talk about a concept called threading. Threading is where you move information along quickly by having it marked here as which pages they are since they're not next to each other. So this is 10 and 18 for our collection, which we'll talk about that later as well. Um, and when you get to page 10, you'll see why it's called threading and what the purpose of having it marked this way is. You don't have to square it. I just squared it so that way it would pop out a bit more. And then one more thing to consider on your index page, as this is the place that probably makes the most sense, is your signifiers. If you decide to use signifiers, uh, it's a really easy way to have a quick reference of things that you have to do and make information stand out. I'm going to move this up a bit. So we have like our square for task, which you can check off, and a triangle for an appointment, which you can color in, a dot for log entries, a heart for important, a star for urgent, and an arrow for a moved item. So those are just some examples. You can use different signifiers. It is recommended to use signifiers just to have a quick visual reference, just because you might associate a certain shape with, oh, I really need to do that, versus having to actually sit down and read every single item. Um, if that doesn't work for you, then that's fine. Again, this is a customizable journal. The point is for it to work for you, not you work for it. All right, we're gonna move on to our next section. Our next section is what's called the future log. And you're going to see in my example that our future log is not where I'm going to tell you to put it. And the reason for that is because this is a personalized thing. And as I was going, I found it easier for my instructions to put this later. But for the purposes of your journal, put your future log closer to the index. You want it to be near the front or near uh, your next starter section uh, as a means of having a quick place to look for any upcoming appointments. And essentially your future log is a quick reference for dates and times of appointments, events, and other important items that you need to do. There's no wrong way to do this. You can put this wherever you want, but in general, it is recommended that you put this near the front, near the index. It just makes it a lot easier to find and access, especially because as you're going, you want to add information as you go. So that's your future log. And this is also our example of threading. Do you remember that I indicated that some of those items were on multiple pages that are not next to each other? So our next example of a future log we have on page 19. So I have this currently on page 11, and I have a marker indicating that it's moved to page 19. This is a way to quick reference um, where your information has moved once a page is full. This is what threading is. So threading is both updating your index so you have the pages marked of when the continuous information is going, but it's also a way of if you open to this page and you're like, oh, this is full, where's my information? You have it marked at the bottom, you don't have to go hunting for it. That's all that threading is. It's a nice, easy tool to make things easier for you. All right, we're gonna move on to the monthly log here in just a second. I'll give you guys a few moments to finish up filling out that index and that future log. Remember, keep it simple. There's no wrong way and just start getting to it. Okay, welcome back. So by now you should have at least started your index and your future log. So now you'll be working on your uh, calendar. 
Some bullet journals have a daily calendar, some have them a weekly, but in general, it is recommended to do a monthly calendar because you'll have a lot of stuff going on in a month, and it gives you a good perspective of what you have coming up and what you can look forward to. So we have here our sample September calendar, and I didn't fill it all the way in with uh, ink because it's just examples of dates and events. But what I did do is mark off some signifiers so that way if I'm looking at this at a glance, I can see, oh, I have an appointment on this day and on this day, and I have an important task on this day. One of the recommendations for the calendar is to just have the month at the top and then numbered down the side, like so, with the day of the week indicated next to the number. So we have the 1st of September is a Tuesday, the 2nd is a Wednesday, the 3rd is a Thursday, and so on. This is one recommendation some people like to use and make a grid. That is partially why the ruler is included. If you're somebody that wants to make a grid, please go ahead and do so. Um, and what's nice is these are see-through, so you'll be able to see what you're doing. All right, um, I don't think that there's anything else about the calendar. You're just gonna be transferring information and making it work to you and what you need. So go ahead and take a look at all of those other calendars that you might have and start adding information. All right, so you've now added all that information and we are on to our next and also optional couple of entries. So one of the optional ones is a September, or sorry, a monthly task list. Ours is September task list. And this is just to keep organized those tasks that aren't necessarily appointments or like upcoming events, but just a reminder of like, oh, you know, every Tuesday I need to take the trash out and then you can check it off. Um, it's just a way to organize tasks in a separate place from events and appointments since they're kind of usually their own separate thing. Like I said, it's optional and some, some people recommend keeping them to a, a minimum. Uh, everyone's a little different. In my uh, personal bullet journal, I actually quite like having a task list because it reminds me of things that I want to keep doing. That being said, it is also a way to figure out what isn't important. If you've moved something over more than once uh, in terms of tasks, then maybe it's not that important and it's time to take it off your task list, list maybe to reevaluate it. Um, like I said, there's not really a wrong way to do that. Moving on, our next uh, optional list is our collection page. Collections are lists of just things. Uh, maybe you are an avid reader and you keep a list of what books you want to read next or you watch a ton of movies and you want to keep a list of movies you've seen or want to see. Maybe you're a doodler and it's a way to have all your doodles in one place. Uh, either way, a collection is a portion of your journal that's used to just keep track of things. It is recommended that you keep these to a minimum because they can bog your journal down and detract from the important information, which is your appointments, your calendar, your to-dos and things like that. So just keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, we have ours here again, threaded. So I see uh, this is page 10 and I've moved my information to page 18. And so if I go to page 18, which I can do really quickly, I'll see both that future log that I mentioned early, earlier and also my collection example. And my collection example is just all of the library locations. You'll see I use a signifier for a log entry because a collection really is just a log book of the things you're collecting. So that's some things to keep in mind for your collection part of your bullet journal if you choose to have that. We're gonna cover over a couple more topics, um, but go ahead and take a few moments to keep working on what we started. The last thing I wanna talk about today is the core of bullet journaling that makes it very useful, and that's migration. Migration is a way of moving information from one calendar to another, or one list to another, or collection to collection. Uh, as you develop your journal, you're going to move information along. You'll move tasks that weren't completed to a new task list. list. You'll update your calendars as you add them to your journal. You'll update your collections. You'll update your blog book or your di diary. Um, and as you do so, you're going to be moving that information. 
and it will help you reevaluate what is and isn't important, what maybe needs to be urgent, what maybe needs to be top of, of a priority list, or maybe what needs to stop being done in your journal. It's a way to help you see what is and isn't working. For me, when I started bullet journaling, what I discovered is having everything, like I said, mentioned before, having all of my task lists and collections in one place, that wasn't working. And so when I migrated to my new journal, I stopped having those because it really does bog you down. That's my personal example. As you do bullet journaling, you're going to find your own examples. Congratulations, you have finished uh, the basics of bullet journaling. So by now you should have an index, a calendar, a task list if you wanted, that one was optional, a logbook, either one on its own separate page or somehow incorporated into your calendar, a collection if you wanted, again, it's optional, and a future log, which should be closer to the top. We've also talked about migration and threading pages as well as signifiers today. These are all just some basic steps to get you started. If you go online, you can check out other bullet journal examples and see some very fancy and intimidating ones, which if you have a lot of time to do, that's cool. Like they're very impressive. But a lot of us have a lot of things going on and we just need a quick reference so we're not having too many calendars to look at while we're trying to sort out our day-to-day -day events. I hope the system helps for you. Um, and I hope you enjoy this new hobby. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, for more information about programming, please check out pplb.org. We have our programming page there. You can also find information on our various social media websites, which is also listed on our PPLB website. If you scroll to the bottom of the page, you'll see all of the links there. Thank you again, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.